So how does a prostitute make her way into the genealogy of the greatest religious leader of all time? We're going to be talking about that and more coming up. We're fixing to continue our study over Hebrews 11. Before we get there though, I think this story needs a little bit of setup. Because I don't know about you, but if I were God, and I were planning the lineage that the savior of the world was going to be coming through, it would look pretty good. On top of that, add that the savior of the world is God incarnate, and you'd better believe that it's going to be a good looking lineage. There would be kings, there would be royalty, there would be princes and princesses. I'd probably throw a few priests into the mix and maybe a few prophets too. You'd better believe that it would be a genealogy worth reading though. I mean, all of the important people would be in it. And thank God that I'm not God. The lineage of Jesus is so different than what I would expect that the all-knowing, all-powerful, almighty God would have wanted. In fact, it's almost the opposite. While there is royalty in the genealogy of Jesus, the kings that are in his line really aren't the greatest of people. And whenever you read Matthew's account of Jesus' genealogy, that fact isn't hidden. In fact, consider this verse. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. That's kind of a harsh way of putting it if you think about it. He might as well have just said, Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. You remember her? She's the one that David had an affair with, and then he murdered her husband to cover up the affair. Yeah, that's the Bathsheba we're talking about, and she's Solomon's mother. That is one of the most incredible things about Scripture, though. If I were God, I would have made everything seem perfect in the line of the Savior of the world, but the fact is, that's just not the way that the world works. God, in His infinite wisdom, understands that He is working with humanity. He is working with imperfect people, and he doesn't try to hide that. Even so, when you're reading through the genealogy of Jesus and you come to verse 5, it has to be a little bit shocking sometimes. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. And I think we all know the story of Rahab. You can find it in Joshua chapter 2, but she was a harlot. And she helped two Israelite spies escape from the city of Jericho. So how does a harlot end up in the genealogy of Jesus? Have you ever asked yourself that question? If you have, then just type the word yes with an exclamation mark by it in the comments. That way I know that I'm not alone. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into this story, though. But we're not actually going to be looking at Joshua for the answer to this question. We're actually going to be looking in Hebrews chapter 11, not only to continue our study over the women of Hebrews 11, but also because that chapter actually holds the answer to this question. Rahab is one of only two women who are specifically mentioned mentioned in Hebrews 11. Here's what it says about her. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And so, here again, we see the unashamed nature of our God. He could have just inspired the writer of Hebrews to have just said Rahab. He didn't actually have to mention the fact that we're giving a prostitute one of the most prolific titles that anyone has ever been given. That's just not our God, though. And here's why. Here's why our God isn't ashamed to have a prostitute in the lineage of Jesus, in the lineage of God made flesh. Because our God is better than any other God. Our God is more real than any other God. In Romans 5 verses 8 through 11, it says this, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God 
through him. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only this, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So we were enemies of God. We were enemies of Christ when he died for us. But according to verse 11, that's one of the things that makes our God so special. He's not like all the other gods because he doesn't need perfect people because he realizes that perfect people are a sham. He doesn't call the perfect. He calls the willing. That's how a prostitute can end up in the lineage of the greatest man in all of history. It's because she was willing. And I want you to understand something about that. If Rahab, who had a lot more wrong in her life than just being a prostitute, could be called by God where she was in that very moment, then the only thing stopping God from calling you is you. This is another one that I really might need to do another follow-up on, but go read the story of Rahab if you have time. You'll be amazed at the faith of this woman who hides two Israelite spies because she knows that the God of Israel is the one true God. And for that, he blesses her greatly. If this video inspired you, then please share it with someone else. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, I guess. And don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to get out there and go do good. <laughs>